There are the twins, Castor and Pollux. See them? Yes, I see them. They are in Gemini, and we can find some deep space objects there in the telescope. From there, you can find the constellation Cancer, which has some cool star clusters we can find with the telescope. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go on the scope. <laughs> Let's Explore Astronomy is sponsored in part by... March is a great month to explore the constellations Gemini and Cancer. Cancer is not a very bright or big constellation, but there are really nice deep space objects to find with your telescope. A good starting point to find Cancer are the bright stars Castor and Pollux. Castor and Pollux are known as the Twins, and are part of the constellation Gemini, which means the Twins. Gemini is located northeast of Orion. Cancer is then just east and slightly south of Gemini. Follow the twins, Castor and Pollux, to the southeast, and you will find Cancer. Castor and Pollux are not twins in the astronomical sense, but instead are twins from Greek mythology. Castor and Pollux were very close their entire life. Castor was a great horseman and fencer. He even taught Hercules how to fence. Pollux was a great boxer. Among their many adventures, they sailed with the Argonauts in search of the Golden Fleece. They were a patron saint to sailors, rescuing many a shipwrecked sailor. One day, the twins got into a fight with two others, and Castor was killed. Pollux did not want to live without his brother, so Zeus agreed to put him in the sky together for all eternity. Right next to the twins, you will find Cancer, which means crab in Latin. When Hercules was fighting the Hydra, his wicked stepmother Hera sent the crab to distract Hercules and hoped that it would help the Hydra kill Hercules. Instead, Hercules stepped on the crab and crushed it. Hera put the crab in the night sky even though it had failed at helping the Hydra. In another story, Hera did not put the crab in the sky, but instead Hercules kicked it into the sky. Ouch! Let's start our exploration in Gemini. M35 is an open cluster. It is a magnitude 5.3 and covers an area about the size of our moon. NGC 2392 is the Eskimo Nebula. It can be seen using a small telescope. The Eskimo is a planetary nebula, the gases being thrown off of a dying star similar to our sun. Another nebula you can find with your scope is NGC 2371 and NGC 2372. It is located southwest of Castor. It appears as two objects, that is why it has two NGC numbers, but it is really only one. Now, let's move over to Cancer. Here, you will find two Messier objects. M44 is an open cluster, the Beehive Cluster. It has a magnitude of 3.7 and can be seen with the naked eye in dark sky areas. It is one of the nearest clusters to Earth. It is one of the first objects Galileo observed with his telescope in 1609. He made out 40 stars. Today, we know there are over a thousand. Over 60% of the stars in the beehive are red dwarfs, and about 30% are similar to our sun. Another Messier object in Cancer is M67, also an open cluster. But where the beehive is estimated to be around 600 million years old, M67 is between 3.2 and 5 billion years old. It is one of the oldest clusters known. It has a magnitude of 6.1, and most of the stars are similar to our sun. But it also contains some red giants. Now, let's take a look at what's up in the southern hemisphere. We will turn our attention this month to the constellation Pupis. Pupis has many cool deep space objects, including three Messier objects. Pupis means the storm of the ship. Pupis was once part of a huge constellation called the Argo Navis. The Argo Navis represented the ship Argo that Jason and the Argonauts sailed on the search for the Golden Fleece. But Argo Navis was way too big for astronomers, so in 1752, 
it was divided up into three constellations. Poopus is the stern of the ship, Vela is the sails, and Karina is the hull of the ship. We told you about Karina last month. Poopus is the largest of the three constellations that together make up the ship Argo. Although it is in the southern hemisphere, Poopus is far enough north that it can be seen up to latitudes of around 40 degrees north. That is why Messier was able to find and catalog some objects in Poopus. In the southern hemisphere, you can see it all the way to the south pole. M46 is an open cluster. It has a magnitude of 6.1. It is very bright and about 5,500 light years from Earth. In M46, you get a two for one when it comes to deep space objects. There is a planetary nebula in M46, NGC 2438. You can find it at the northeastern edge of M46, and it appears as a ring-shaped object 40 seconds in diameter. M47 is only a degree away from M46 and is also an open cluster. It is only 1600 light years away from us. It has a magnitude of 4.2. The third Messier object in Poopus is M93, another open cluster. It has a magnitude of 6 and is about 3600 light years away. NGC 2451 is an open cluster of magnitude 2.8. Near NGC 2451, you will find yet another open cluster, NGC 2477. It is of magnitude 5.8. There are several other open clusters of less than 10 magnitude to be found in Poopus, so consult your star guide. If you are looking for a nice globular cluster, then set your scope on NGC 2298. It has a magnitude of 9.3 and is 30,000 light years away. In a small scope, NGC 2440 will appear as a fuzzy star, 20 seconds in diameter. It is a planetary nebula of magnitude 9.4 located 4,000 light years from Earth. At the center of the nebula is a very hot white dwarf, the remains of the core of the star. Now, let's turn our scopes closer to home and see what planets in our solar system we can find this month. Mercury will be in the morning sky just before sunrise. Venus will be in the morning sky starting a few hours before sunrise. Mars will be in Virgo. You could see it all night starting around midnight. Jupiter is in Gemini, invisible almost all night. Saturn appears east of Mars in the constellation Libra, rising just after midnight. Uranus is in Pisces and is visible just after sunset, the first part of the month, sinking lower until it is not visible around mid-month. Neptune is not visible most of this month. It appears again just before sunrise late in the month. New Moon is March 1st and March 30th. Full Moon is March 16th. So get your scope aimed toward the twins in Gemini, the crab Cancer, and the stern of the great ship Argo, Poopus. You'll have some great astronomical viewing. I found the beehive! Don't get stung! Very funny, Herc. Until next time, happy stargazing, everybody! Check out our other episodes in Let's Explore Astronomy series at www.tedcookproductions.com slash LEA. You will find all kinds of cool astronomy topics there. <coughs> hey, give a shout out to our sponsors, without whom we would not be here. Visit their websites and partake of their services and products. A big thank you to the Yukon Department of Tourism and Culture and Westmark Hotels, Westmark Whitehorse.